Hello, guys. Hey, guys. Nice to see you on another webinar session. Uh, my name is Damian from forexbolt.com, and probably you're surprised to see me, but uh, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to say like few words be before we start uh, with uh, our uh, webinar instructor, Daniel, who will be joining this webinar session. So I would like you guys, if you are able to see me and hear me, please use the questions section simply to write, hey, Damian, nice to meet you. We can see you. We can hear you. Everything's fine with your setup. Uh, so I will be like, uh, <laughs> uh, I will know that everything's working uh, great. Great from RSA is what Len says. Hey, Len, nice to see you. I hope you can hear me and see me. <laughs> All right. Hey, by the way, uh, a, a little bit uh, stupid question from my side. Maybe what was uh, RSA thing from? Maybe RSA. Um, re I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it now. Republic of South Africa. Sorry, man, about that. Yeah. All right. So in South Africa, Len is able to see me and hear me, which is a good thing. All right. All right, so now we're going to do a webinar today on MetaQuals GUI framework and building panels with our webinar uh, instructor, Daniel. Uh, this is going to be the first webinar for Daniel uh, for Forex Boat. So it's going to be his first uh, session. This is why I decided to. To, to start my face first. <laughs> uh, and then Daniel uh, is going to continue the webinar for you guys. But let's wait like for a few more minutes until some more people join. Uh, it's Sunday today. <laughs> and I see that the people that are attending are not much. And probably the reason for this is that because, hey, it's Sunday. <laughs> and people would like to take a break from Forex training. And which is totally understandable in my opinion. But uh anyway we're still gonna do this webinar session of course because we do two webinar sessions every month for you guys also this webinar session is going to be recorded uh and it is going to be uploaded at our website uh, during the next week yeah absolutely during the next week not exactly sure if it's gonna happen on monday but probably it's gonna be on monday uh, so you'll be able i mean all the people that are on the trader membership plan will be able to watch this webinar session on a replay, which is the beauty of these webinar sessions, because we have like nearly 40 webinar sessions created and recorded, which means that we have like a fat webinar database already for uh, our um, for our students. The other thing that uh, I wanted to share with you is that we're currently running a giveaway for 2000 American dollars in a Forex trading account. And this is the last day of the giveaway, guys. This is the last day. So the giveaway is going to end in 14 hours, one, four hours. So if you want to participate in the giveaway, simply go to www.forexbolt.com slash giveaway. And you will be able to complete some of the entry options to participate in our giveaway. And then I think on Wednesday, not sure. Yeah, on Wednesday, I'm going to do a draw of the winner of our giveaway uh, i'm gonna do it live on our facebook page so i'm gonna go live and i'm gonna do the draw on air you know in front of people so so you will guys see who is going to be the winner of this uh giveaway all right guys now i suggest that uh, we proceed with this uh webinar session i'm going to turn off my camera now and i'm going to turn off my microphone and I'm going to leave you in the hands of our webinar instructor, uh, Daniel, who is going to take care of you uh, during this webinar uh, session. All right, Daniel, now I am turning off my camera. I'm gone. Now I'm going to turn off my microphone and I'm giving the word to Daniel. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, please let me know in the question section if you can hear me. Just press like plus or something else or yes, uh, so that I will know that uh, there is no problem and you can hear me. Okay. 
so uh, there are only four attendees now yeah maybe because it's a sunday hopefully someone else will join us but uh, i think that uh, attending this uh, webinar is uh, much better than uh, simply watching it live uh, watching its record uh, because uh, you might have questions i'm sure that you will have questions and i'm here to answer these questions uh, the webinar will uh, mm, will go over the topic of uh, drawing panels and uh, mm, other mm, graphical structures inside the uh, MT4. I will talk about MT4 all the time. This is not because uh, uh, it's only MT4, not MT5. No, it is both MT4 and MT5. Uh, uh, very similar language, so I will simply tell about uh, MQL4 or MT4, but uh, you will know that uh, all I said uh, is uh, true uh, regarding MQL5 too. Okay, so please uh, uh, watch our disclaimer, um, because it's really um, very important information so i will wait until you go over this text Okay, mm, hopefully you have seen the disclaimer before. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, we can go to the mm, main topic of the webinar. So the topic uh, is uh, MQL uh, graphical user interface building panels. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel. I have three years of experience as a MQL 4 and 5 developer. Uh, I worked as a freelancer and uh, also I uh, was part of a team and currently I am still uh, part of a team that do investigation uh, of the markets and uh, risk management tool and also some investigation on how to uh, apply the algorithm to benefit from uh, the uh, forex markets all is done in mql4 or 5. Uh, as i told you today we are going to talk about graphical user interfaces there are three options uh, main options uh, that i know and uh, i uh, had some experience with uh, during my uh, uh, three years practice it is possible what well, first is uh, it is possible to use a ready-made meta quotes framework uh, this means that uh, Meta Quotes company uh, created some piece of code and uh, we can use it uh, to build the panels. Alternative way is to do everything from the very beginning using the most uh, low level tools. Uh, and the third option is uh, alternative libraries. I just uh, provided uh, one. Uh, link uh, one uh, um, link uh, uh, to the library but you can find much uh, more libraries and probably find uh, uh, the one that is uh, clear to you there are also articles on how to use uh, the libraries uh, uh, so it's also another option and uh, for you it is always a question uh, which of them to use and the main ideas are whether you will need to customize something or you can use it uh, as it is and how fast uh, you can do it so mt4 framework uh, has uh, plenty advantages like it is really fast 
to uh, to draw something uh, all elements uh, that we will uh, discuss a little uh, later uh, they are all ready made and given there are also examples i will show you another example today and uh, the main disadvantage there are actually two disadvantages first it is not very easy to follow uh, the examples uh, sometimes uh, and uh, as a result you may miss to include one uh, line of the code and everything is not working and you're trying to debug you're trying to figure out why it's not working but uh, it may take uh, several hours to find why you press a button but nothing happens and also you can uh, uh, notice some situations and you need to customize some elements uh, we will have exactly this situation uh, in, in this uh, uh, webinar today that uh, there is a ready-made uh, tool but uh, there is a problem with that tool and uh, it is always a problem what to do in such case either to think about some uh, uh, work around either to make some conventions uh, uh, or to go deeply into the code to try and see how to fix that option uh, it can be sometimes a problem a time consuming operation because uh, elements uh, sometimes you need to go like five six uh, classes up to the parent classes to figure out where exactly is a problem why it happens uh, if you do not have such problems, then uh, MT4 framework is a preferred way of uh, drawing the panels. Uh, you can see an example of a simple panel. It is uh, available in every MT4 in the indicate, indicator sections section. You can find uh, this example. It doesn't do any uh, important stuff. It's just uh, if you press on item zero, it will uh, uh, mention what exactly you press. So this is just an example. Alternative way is to is to use basic MT4 tools. It is of course slow because you need to draw all the elements uh, by cell by yourself. You need to locate them. You need to uh, mention colors many properties so it's really a slow process it may take for me it took uh, two days uh, to develop uh, i mean full time two or maybe even three days you can think it's about 25 hours uh, at least uh, to build something like you can see in the right hand side so this is point zero trade manager pro uh, which is available uh, it's just an example from the internet i choose a random one but i have I had a similar uh, request in my practice uh, and uh, yeah it takes time to draw all the elements starting from uh, each element individually and then to locate them into the into this section uh, on the other hand you have uh, virtually full control over these uh, elements you can draw really everything uh, with all the colors how you uh, how you wish uh, also you uh, understand the code you see if there is some problem you can easily uh, test and debug uh, just one uh, mm, well, couple seconds to mention about one important uh, uh, situation inside mt4 and mt5 uh, is, uh, has the same problem if you draw if you use the panels uh, if you press some button then uh, mt4 creates an event and that event is then handled and suppose you press a button by uh, as a result uh, uh, by is sent uh, following all the instructions that you can see like in this uh, uh in this panel but in the tester events are disabled they are completely disabled so if you run uh, your panel in the test and press a button button uh, like buy or sell or any other it would not work for now mt4 does not support it so it is technically prohibited to use such options i do not know why i cannot even imagine maybe 
there is some explanation, but unfortunately, I cannot uh, uh, answer this question. Maybe it's just because uh, there are different options to backtest, like visual and uh, uh, without visual mode. And if you do not have visual mode, then probably events are, are cannot be generated. It is a bigger problem because sometimes it is convenient to use events to um, to connect some blocks uh, of the code, but uh, in test unfortunately they are disabled. Uh, the key elements of the panel are listed in this uh, slide. Uh, you may uh, decide that probably a drop-down list uh, is uh, not included here, uh, which is true. Uh, it's not so an easy element, but uh, technically there's not too much. It's not complicated. It's not uh, easy. It's uh, simply uh, not included here, but uh, all the rest elements are um, here. So if you want to draw a panel, probably you will need some combination uh, of these elements. We can go over them quite fast. Uh, panel background is uh, the block uh, is a rectangle, a rectangle that uh, contains all other elements. It has a background, so it's much more convenient to see that all the elements are inside some background. Bottoms, I think it's the most easy to understand uh, uh, in this uh, slide, if you press buy or sell or close all, uh, you need to press a button. Bitmap buttons is uh, another type of buttons. Uh, they do not have plain text uh, inside them, but they have uh, some kind of pictures. Uh, they can be large pictures, your custom pictures that you downloaded somewhere or your designer created. And it can be small buttons like we saw to minimize, maximize, and we will see it again a little later. Spin edit elements uh, are used to type some information from the keyboard uh, and also to incre increment, decrement the value. Uh, radio button and checkbox examples were shown uh, in the two slides before. Like here, you can see in the in the left there are item zero to three. You can select only one. Uh, this is a radio button, so you cannot have first chosen item zero and two only one. Uh, the middle uh, block item uh, zero to three uh, it is a checkbox, so you can easily select. Uh, any combination like zero and one, zero and three, zero, one and two, or uh, everything, whatever you wish, you can select. Uh, an example of a drop down list is mentioned to the right. Uh, actually, it's not uh, like dropping down, but this is a simple list. Uh, they are very close, and probably there is not much difference between them. Uh, and plain text, yeah, sometimes you need to group all, uh, your elements. Okay. Yeah, uh, you showed another example. I think uh, <clears throat> and that's another good example of a library. So there are really many libraries, but uh, uh, the easiest uh, one is probably uh, default library from uh, MetaCloud Corporation. Let's go further. In order to, uh, first we will uh, discuss the option of drawing all the elements from the very beginning, and then we will uh, cover the situation uh, uh, when you want, when you do not uh, have much time and a simple task, so it's much easier to use uh, a default uh, MQL uh, library. Uh, all the objects enumerated at the link uh, can be used, but uh, usually if, uh, you do not need like trend lines, uh, horizontal, vertical lines, arrows, and all that stuff. Uh, mo most of uh, objects uh, that you will need if you want to 
draw your own panel, uh, bottom label, uh, edit object, uh, bitmaps, and the rectangle label. Uh, we will use them and I'll, in this uh, webinar, and I will explain uh, when do we need which option. Uh, all the time you draw a panel, I think it's better to start from a panel header. Uh, of course, it's not uh, important, it's not necessary. I mean, you can live without it, but uh, it's uh, much more convenient if you have it. So it has the following four elements, like bitmap uh, label to close icon. If you press it, uh, the object disappears. Uh, minimize, maximize uh, icon, it changes now, it's uh, looking down. As you can see, uh, it is for the, supposed that the, the, there is uh, it is maximized. If it is up, it is minimized. Uh, it is slightly different uh, situation if you use MQL for uh, default library. We will see that. Uh, also, there is a head block. It is exactly the rectangle label. So you simply draw this like a background and place uh, all the objects. Uh, that you need. And also uh, edit uh, uh, object is the name of the panel. So if you draw, th if you build it, probably you will uh, decide uh, that you want to give uh, some name to it. And if you are uh, sharing the code, then uh, other people will see that uh, this is something that you made. So this is simply a name, like we saw uh, point zero. Uh, trade manager. Uh, we will use structures and uh, classes uh, in this uh, webinar. Unfortunately, I cannot imagine how difficult it would be if we do not have structures and classes. It is still possible if you know for sure all the details. Uh, you can have simply maybe one 100 maybe 1000 uh, objects uh, and uh, parameters for each but uh, you can easily group them into the structures and or into the classes uh, and uh, in such case there is no problem so uh, in order to use a bitmap like to minimize maximize or to close uh, mm, these uh, buttons that have the specific minimize, maximize, or close uh, buttons. Uh, you need these technical parameters like uh, bitmap widths and heights, and also offset. Even though they are, uh, since we are using default elements, uh, they have to be uh, of the size 16. So you can try to to, to play with it, to put 10 or 25, but seems to me that uh, 16 is uh, only a reasonable value for these three parameters. Uh, if you use a bitmap, if you use a bitmap uh, label, it can be a larger object. Uh, maybe in that case, you will need width, height, and offset uh, different values. And also, you need to specify a path uh, to the object, uh, to the picture, if uh, your uh, button is uh, pressed and unpressed. Because if you press it, then uh, it changes, uh, its state changes from uh, true to false or vice versa. And uh, of course, it has some uh, events. And in addition to those events, uh, the picture can change. It is not necessary, like you can see uh, at the bottom there are two uh, lines of examples. Uh, this is how to initialize minimize maximize button and how to initialize the close button. So you can see that uh, a path uh, to the close button is same for on and off simply because if you press it then need to close to destroy all the elements to clear the chart uh, from all the objects uh, that were created by the expert advisor and that's why we do not uh, need to have uh, one off or on option we just have only one option uh, for close bottom if we press it 
then uh, everything is destroyed. So I put the same name into the on and off. Uh, and this is an example of a header class. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, it would be very nice if you can follow the presentation carefully because uh, the slides will be recorded, uh, the slides will be available and the record of the webinar will be available and also we will share the full code. So now we uh, we would not go over all the code but the most important elements some elements could be very easy to do or uh, very obvious so we would not waste time on that uh, but you will have the full sources uh, of uh, of the two panels uh, to see what is uh, in case you will decide to draw something by yourself, you are welcome. Uh, in case uh, you would find some problem, you can compare your code with this code. So the header, um, there is a, one important uh, parameter which is called the state. It can be minimized, maximized and closed. And you can see then a public function get state. It will be employed uh, to minimize, maximize, or close the object. Uh, other four parameters, five parameters, I think they're easy to understand. This is just a location, uh, start and end of the object, um, depending on the width and height of the object. And prefix is also used to easier to navigate because it's possible that uh, you will have a uh, um, similar or very same uh, object uh, object names and as you probably know i hope you know that it is not allowed to have uh, uh, two objects with the same name on the same chart simply one object changes another it's like a passport id yes there are no two it cannot be possible to to print two passports with the same like A, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, code or with uh, car plates. Uh, so inside the MT4, uh, this identification is done by the name of the object. That's why we need a prefix for the header. And then we will have the uh, object, uh, the other objects uh, whose name starts from this prefix. Uh, four other elements are like background label, uh, label name, bitmap, and uh, bitmap close. Uh, these four elements are exactly what we saw like here. So there are four different names for these four objects. It's possible also to use them as other classes, but why do we? Why should we overcomplicate this stuff? In order to create a background and these buttons, uh, I use the functions that you just uh, need to Google this rect label create or go to this. Uh, uh, follow this link and then you will uh, open bottom or rectangle and uh, they have this function, uh, function uh, like uh, rect label create, map label create. It's possible that it will be slightly different like rectangle instead of rect but you will understand that the idea is absolutely the same. Uh, and uh, the function uh, has a list of parameters that are also following the same uh, logic. What I would like to mention here is that we use uh, some elements like uh, you can see uh, line 39, uh, utils.hd.clr. This is a um, utility so um, a utility structure was created we will we'll go to it uh, 
a couple of slides later. Uh, and it has some information, some important information like type of border, type of corner, type of uh, um, background colors uh, for different like general elements and for bitmap elements. You, you can see uh, line 44 where we mention pictures. So this is utils.hd.mm bitmap pick on, pick off. These all are past. Uh, Mm, these all are copied to create such object. Uh, here we mentioned uh, uh, how we initialize uh, this uh, element. Here we use, it's possible to uh, manually type, but I don't think it's really very convenient to find the element. If you decide to change the button, you will have to go over all the code and look where it is. So it's better to have all the options, all the utility properties in one file. Um, once you press a button in the header section, it may uh, react somehow, of course, if you if you have such uh, code in the on chart events function. So once a user presses a button, uh, I'm talking about uh, the header, still uh, I'm, go I'm talking about the header, uh, but uh, this example I think uh, is applicable to other situations more or less, so I will explain what might be the difference. So once a user presses a button to minimize, or to close or to maximize. Uh, Expert Advisor has a function on chart event. It has four uh, four fields, but for simplicity, it's like here. Uh, on any event, uh, like pressing a button, this function is uh, called, and from that function, we call a specific uh, uh, on chart event function of the panel header that we mentioned here. So we must have this function and uh, we'll see what, what is inside the function. Uh, if a panel is, uh, if uh, on chart event happened uh, from the panel, then we check the status that I uh, told you at the state the first line. And select if it is one, then we maximize, zero, minimize, minus one, delete all the objects, remove uh, experts from the chart, all the stuff. If it is false, then I need to check other sections, maybe uh, one of those uh, on chart events is called. Hey, is it clear? Could you please uh, uh, press something so that I understand it? Hello. Okay, thank you, man. And uh, about minimizing, maximizing, uh, what uh, to tell you, you will think how to do that, but uh, it's really very simple. These are two lines that you can see. So if you want to minimize you simply hide the object uh, it should be called for every op uh, for every object or if you have a panel then you need to hide four objects uh, from the panel header and maybe other um, objects from uh, uh, other sections but for each of them you need to call this function object proper object prop time frames object no periods this is this means uh, object exists uh, but uh, you do not see it you cannot see it at uh, any time frame uh, opposite uh, so in order to maximize object all periods this means that uh, you will see the object uh, again uh, it's much faster and easier rather than to delete the objects and to remove them i think it's it should be useful so let's go further this is uh, uh, on the top 
like lines 91 to 114 you can see the on chart event uh, function related to this uh, header class uh, we check that uh, object is clicked and we have two objects actually we have four as we discussed right but uh, we are only interested in two objects one is uh, uh, bit m bitmap hide name which means uh, to minimize maximize and another is close and functions to minimize maximize and close uh, they simply change the state and then and return true in both cases uh, in the bottom you can see how the expert advisor should work as it has a panel and other like section one section two maybe section 300 if you need many of them uh, so you select uh, you check that uh, the panel uh, function returns true if it returns true then uh, we switch between the states if one we unhide or maximize if zero we hide or minimize if one we simply call on the init and remove the expert advisor and uh, uh, after we check this option we can allow to check all other elements like maybe section one uh, on chart event uh, happened like you had uh, something in the section one and uh, like a button to buy or sell or to close or something else uh, in that case uh, we need to check those options also and at the end of course to close but anyway you will have the full source Yes, Google and uh, also Stack Overflow and also the forexboat.com uh, team uh, is uh, mm, available if you want to ask something. Um, yeah, also you can try to debug, you know, uh, it's not so complicated, uh, especially when you will see the full code, I will try to, I'm trying to explain the basic concepts, uh, but uh, I think that if you want to build a, um, an easier, uh, if you want to build a, a panel using MT4 default framework, uh, then it will become uh, much more complicated uh, at the first uh, time but uh, with some experience maybe it will be much simpler a spin edit object as we talked uh, is an object that can accept man manual input and uh, has uh, uh, bitmaps uh, to increment decrement and also labels probably just to tell what exactly to type like email or lot size or take profit uh, but uh, the last one is uh, rather optional this is an example of all the properties of the spin input object they're all in structure uh, the main uh, ones are background uh, color in my example it's like at the end you can see uh, color white smoke uh, font name size uh, uh, location of the up and down uh, buttons it, uh, lines 124 to 126 and also names uh, path to the objects uh, you can find them I choose spin in spin deck dot bmp but there are other interesting options uh, that uh, you can try maybe it will be uh, looking uh, uh, better for for your taste i do not know about labels i would like to mention that uh, for me it seems that 18 is really the minimum if you have a uh, uh, if you have a laptop, if you have a computer with a desk, uh, 
with a monitor of maybe 20 inches then probably 18 is the size in pixels is the minimum you should not take uh, uh, less simply because um, the objects uh, these two objects uh, up and down will be uh, one close to another so it will be really inconvenient and also I think that the size of the field to print in all the elements it should be like 50 pixels at least but maybe even more I don't know it's up to you my suggestion is to use 50. this is uh, clarification of the class so we have uh, elements and we have uh, public methods uh, hide unhide and kill i think it is clear it's from the previous uh, section so if we decide to minimize maximize and close the elements then we will need these functions like hide and hide and kill in it is just to draw all the elements on event is used to uh, so sometimes it is called on event in my code sometimes on chart event uh, but uh, it's up to you to decide how to call this element, uh, this function, uh, which is responsible for some operations. Get value function is here uh, to receive some value. Suppose you need to, suppose you type the, the lot size. 1.5 and then you press buy so we need to get value of this element and set value is uh, set values is another function that is done at the beginning it uh, says about step and the number of digits uh, it is uh, this customization can be really uh, helpful compared to the uh, case with uh, manual with the default MT4 uh, panel, we will see an example there uh, slightly later. Uh, this is a function of uh, on chart. Uh, yeah, these are the main functions of the spin input. So if you pr press uh, uh, objects up or down, then uh, the result increases or decreases automatically get value I think I explained and set values here as we told uh, it says about step and the uh, value digits so that uh, you do not have a problem that your lot size is 0 0.123456 now it can be like 0 0.12 and that's it and the next is 0 0.13 uh, okay, let's uh, look at the buttons next. After that, I think we will uh, we will see the real example how it works and uh, what else to do and go then finally to the uh, default framework that you will see is much much faster to code. So we need buttons and sometimes in order to have a button we need to specify a color of the background and color of the text, the name of the text, position, uh, maybe you will need to um, specify it uh, separately, maybe you can do it on the fly, so the width, haze and uh, position start of the bottom are not uh, so important. Here, this is a class. Uh, below, you can see an example of a class uh, that has uh, um, line 17 is the name of the button. Uh, this is name of the object, so we che we must keep that name into consideration. And uh, once we uh, have uh, once that option button is pressed, it is this function. Num uh, line number 33 returns true so we know what to do and uh, now yeah just a quick overview of what we of what i think is the best uh, advice is uh, uh, after we go uh, so we are done with the header we are talking about the main section and we just discussed all the elements that we might need uh, like spin edit, uh, bottom uh, label, I think will be very 
uh, easy after you understand the spin edit radio bottom and channel box are here in the same concept so they're also not the problem so the main advice is to split section if you need several different sections if you need to remove some section for some reason uh, it's better simply to hide a section not to select uh, whom to delete also yeah on chart event hide uh, or uh, unhide delete blocks uh, it's better to have them ready uh, yeah, you need to have a public method sometimes to access objects, like we have a spin edit, it has a public method get values, simply because uh, get value, it is public method, line 130, because uh, if it is private, then uh, you would not know how what is the value, so you type something, uh, your new lot size, but you cannot check it if it is not a public method. If you have many objects, if you want some objects to appear before some other at the same place, then uh, play with object property background. It can be true or false. If it is uh, true, then objects are uh, on the chart. If it is false, they are on the top of the object. Uh, and uh, keep uh, height of each section, of course, because. Uh, Otherwise, you would not know where to place the next section. This is an example of a section which has uh, uh, its size, prefix, of course, background, line number 23, and uh, two objects, two buttons, and one spin edit load. This is just an example. As I told you, to add more buttons, I think it will be really easy for you once you get the code. If you need to add uh, other uh, more complex objects like radio bottom or checkbox button, something else, then uh, spin input uh, using the same concept. Yeah, here I enumerated how I created the object. This is like an example. Uh, you can uh, you, you can see that there are numbers like 10 or something uh, 25 uh, and this is like one approach another approach is to put all that into properties i do not know what is more uh, convenient for me it looks like it's better to have everything in the properties but i think that alternative way is also fine Okay, of course we need this uh, function that I told you, like on chart event, hide, unhide, and kill. Okay, now we are done with uh, these two sections, uh, with, uh, I mean with the header and with uh, section one. This all we have in section one, so three buttons and uh, ground. Uh, this is what we should do. We are including those uh, sections. Panel is the name of the folder uh, that I created. So if you do your own project, uh, it will be different. Uh, global prefix uh, and the two objects. It's also possible to create another class like we had here and uh, to add all the elements in this class like you can see in uh, uh, lines 24-26. Okay, then we create and initialize header, create and initialize section 1. Uh, you can see also what should we do with the uh, you know, in the on the init uh, function we check if object exists then we kill it and delete the entire object if you remove line 41 it's possible that header does not exist and you cannot call header dot kill function as a result uh, it will be a critical error and uh, you will uh, uh, not be able to go further to delete section 1 section 2 because line 43 will be end of the file it will end of the function will not be able to go down that's why it's better to check pointer first 
And as a result, we have this kind of my panel with two buttons, and uh, uh, we can type the elements. Uh, we can type the lot. We can increase it, decrease it, and this is an chart event full function. Um, if you press by, it returns one. If you press so, it returns two. But it's just like a convention. You can uh, code as you wish. There are some other uh, available options, like section one and access to the bottom, and then you check if the bottom is pressed. Uh, I did not uh, write uh, how to buy, how to sell. I think it's more or less obvious. Uh, in order to make sure that the function works, we can simply uh, print the logs and see that, okay, after pressing buy, we receive this kind of log. Okay, if you have questions regarding own panel, I hope I will be able to uh, to answer it right now, or alternatively, we can uh, go to the block of uh, building the panel using the MT4 framework. I think it will be much faster in the sense that it's not so easy to listen to the new code for about 15 minutes. But uh, my suggestion is to go to uh, MT4 uh, framework, and then I will answer all the questions. Is it okay? I think that if not, nobody minds, we can go to the uh, um, building panel from using the MT4 framework. So what you should do is to include a uh, dialog, controls.dialog. Uh, it has all necessary elements like C, uh, C application dialog class. And also you need to include all the elements that you're going to use. Here we are going to use button, label, and uh, no, I think we do not uh, go to use label. I removed it because it doesn't mean it don't, we don't need it. Uh, and uh, spin edit is this exactly object. But if you want to mention that uh, lot is here, then okay, uh, you will need a label uh, object included also. Uh, you need to specify these uh, sizes like panel width. Uh, panel height and uh, bottom sizes, and also you can use the, uh, these constants for these global variables uh, for your spin edit object. Uh, you have to to create the interface of this object and uh, destroy it using the reason. Uh, better not to forget this function because otherwise. Uh, Object will not uh, leave, uh, will remain after you press exit or uh, after you remove it from the chart. And uh, here is the main complicated stuff. So, how we create the interface? First, we, uh, as you can see, I call, I declared. Uh, uh, C application dialog class uh, uh, instance called panel. Yeah, it's from the capital letter simply because uh, it's really the single object, but also to easily define it. So it's line 15. Uh, line 69, we create it, we give a name, we tell about the uh, sub window, which is uh, First zero is uh, a chart ID, it is zero current chart, panel is the name of the object, first uh, zero of these three is uh, sub-window, zero means main chart, then uh, where do we start zero and zero uh, position, and width and height are uh, located. So first we need to create, then we create objects like uh, button cell, button buy, and load speed, uh, load spin. Uh, 
and add these objects to the panel. And very, very important, line 88, You after you are done with create interface, you need to call run. Otherwise, you will have problems. It would not simply work. So run is really very, very important. On chart events, you can call on... Uh, um, yeah, you must have a function on chart event, like line 51. Uh, I do not know whether it is really very important to call panel on event simply because it's uh, uh, usually all the elements have on event or on chart event function. Uh, but uh, for most of them, uh, their goal is simply to to make sure that object is still uh, on the chart. If you delete an object by mistake, then this panel on event is exactly for making sure that the object is deleted and uh, removed from the chart. But from the, for the panels, uh, for an instance of C app dialog, uh, this on event is also used to minimize, maximize, and uh, delete uh, all the objects. So if you, you have uh, we declared names of uh, button buy and sell and now uh, you can see what else we can do so if a uh, button is pressed then uh, we will see value uh -huh. and very important uh, option about uh, customization i make a comment on line number 80 spin edit accepts only integers so if you want to um, to mention lot size you have to multiply it probably by 100 or to write your own spin edit uh, object uh, so you have to solve somehow this problem uh, my suggestion for this particular case is like to think that it is multiplied by 100 so uh, in this example we can see n which means 0 0.10 if we press sell it will uh, sell with 0 0.10 lot because it does not accept doubles. There are many other problems and limitations of MT4 framework that will uh, make uh, someone thinking what to do with it. But uh, yeah, it can be like uh, agreed and uh, told in the documentation. It can be another choice up to you. But yeah, you must know that sometimes this MT4 framework uh, has some limitations. One of them is that spin edit does not accept doubles. Okay, now this is an example of the panel, and uh, these are the conclu conclusions. Uh, so, if you want to develop from scratch, it's long process, but you can do whatever you can imagine, and probably even something that you cannot imagine, but still it's possible. And it's usually easier to debug to find the problems. Uh, my advice here is to group all the variables into structures, classes, and have uh, as uh, less number of objects as possible, so they should all be structured. If you use a framework, then you must be very attentive because if you miss something, if you if you write line 38 panel dot destroy and uh, do not mention reason then it causes a problem if you do not add line 88 it uh, causes a problem if you don't add line 57 again you will have a big problem and uh, it's not uh, very easy to debug uh, that code if uh, you made some problem it's uh, the main uh, disadvantage of the framework. Uh, and another is that sometimes you need to go down to four or five parent classes to find what uh, the function exactly is doing. On the other hand, it's an advantage is that it is very fast. So you can see that this simple panel can be written maybe in uh, in 20 minutes, I think, maybe in 10 minutes. It's only like 100 lines of code. So 10 minutes is enough to build this panel. And if you want to extend, you simply need to change panel height and add more objects. So it's also fast. 
Okay, now I would like to ask you if you have questions. What kind of questions? I'm here to try to reply to you on any uh, questions that I can um, that I can understand. So you're welcome to ask your questions here. Okay, I think that uh, Mr. Gray has a question. Yeah, we are waiting for him. If someone else has questions too, then please also mention your questions here. How do you add a number to a display cell? I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you mean how to add number this n into this cell? Is it what you mean? Okay, I will answer the question as a Ah, I understand. Okay, so uh, we have we declared an element, spin edit element. It is in global variables. So here in the chart event, if uh, uh, and edit we update it, and also if we um, call uh, some function, this is how we do it. So load spin. It has a function uh, value. With no with uh, with no parameters of this function. If you add parameters, then I think uh, uh, it will be overridden. So if you put uh, load spin dot value uh, and one inside the brackets, then uh, the object will change from what it was to one. But uh, value without uh, with anything inside the brackets is uh, the size of the uh, returns uh, the value. So line 59, line 60, I think uh, example is clear. I divided by 100 uh, simply because I told that there is a limitation with uh, uh, a lot. That's why here I divided by 100. Of course, it's not necessary, it's not possible, uh, it's not uh, required if uh, you use like percent of risk to uh, percent of the equity of the equity to risk per trade, for instance, or stop loss in pips. Okay, no problem. Yeah, you can. Uh, you do not uh, need to use doubles. Probably integers is enough. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Yeah, please just tell yes or no, so I will know that uh, we should wait someone uh, until you uh, write your questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gray. And what about else? Okay. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for attending. I would really appreciate if you if you attend, if you tell us how you are satisfied with the webinar. It would be much better, of course, if uh, you could answer this question maybe a week later when you understand, uh, when you will see the code and understand how to do it and uh, uh, that it is really a convenient tool. But uh, we cannot wait, so <laughs> please uh, give your feedback right now.
Ajá. Yeah, while you are uh, deciding what to what mark to give me for this webinar, I would like to remind you once again that in the following week we will put a, a record of this webinar into the regular webinar section and also you will have all the code and probably this uh, uh, slides uh, i think you will have them also at least i do not mind so you will have the code you can download it look at it and uh, try to uh, analyze and of course practice practice is uh, something that is really important in programming you know it's very difficult to master programming i do not know about uh, other uh, domains uh, because in other domains uh, yeah it's possible that uh, some people are good in theory some people are good in practice but in programming unfortunately it's not possible to be it's not enough to be good in theory uh, it's really necessary to have some practice that's why i hope that uh, you will practice once you need or maybe just uh, if starting from this uh, uh, from these simple blocks and at least to understand how it should work add more elements uh, uh, so I think that will be a good practice that will help uh, you in case you want to um, start, stop trading uh, like for before some news events. Uh, if you control your code, you have an expert advisor, but you still need some tools sometimes to, uh, to prohibit trading, maybe some other options. Uh, to easily control the parameters of the expert advisor without relaunching it so it can be quite a lot of possible uh, applications uh, why it is better to have such blocks rather than not to have of course it would be interesting what other topics regarding programming you're interested in we have uh, many i think we have many topics uh, mentioned uh, in our webinars but uh, i know that uh, we promised you to have more and more webinars and that's why it would be interesting if you have some specific questions regarding programming uh, what topics would you like to cover maybe you would like to see how to draw a dashboard or how to create an indicator that uh, collects information from different uh, indicators symbols time frames maybe you would like to have some pra uh, some more explanation of classes structures and differences between them maybe you would like to uh, hear about other specific topics in such case please uh, drop a message to our support and to know that uh, some topics are of some demand we are working for you and uh, thank you i would like uh, damien to to end uh, maybe to uh, remind about the giveaway maybe something else uh, if you don't have questions to me then thank you again and hope to see you uh, someday uh, on my next uh, webinars thank you